Ladies and gentlemen from the Microsoft Theater here yeah. in downtown Los Angeles. Hey, yo, I see you, man. Brought to you by Sean Porter. Sean Porter. Hey, yo, Sean Porter, hold tight. We coming out there. Live hold tight. From Los Angeles. Hey, yo, put your headphones it's on, man. It's time for the main event of the here it is. evening. What up, people? I thought you were mixing it down for a second. I thought I heard a, did I hear a record scratch in there. No, me? No. I don't know. I, don't know. I tried Ooh. that when I was little, though. <laughs> Trying to scratch a record? Yeah, the cousin that was, uh, well, my dad's cousin uh, was a DJ. He, he used to DJ all my dad's boxing events and all that kind of stuff. And couldn't wait to go to his house and just jump on. I had no clue what I was doing. He showed me a little bit. And then, when, of course, when he showed me a little bit, I thought I was a professional. You have to. <laughs> but uh, so I, that, again, that's why I like pushing these buttons. Because it makes me feel, you feel know. like DJ Premier over there? Like I'm in control. <laughs> so so you never you never tried to be a rapper? Just just DJ? Man, listen. I, I, I did that a little bit. Hey, hey, hey you know, I, I dropped some bars. I, I, dropped, I dropped five bars. I said. Nah, no, nah, no. Nah, you need to go work. You need to go. You need to just gave him, a, gave him a little taste. And hey, Carson, I said, I, hey, I read them back to myself. Spitting them when I was writing them, they felt hot though. And I said it. I said, Carson, this shit is whack, and we'll never see the light of day. I'm burning this. <laughs> Carson, you ever hear the song I did? I feel like you did. Oh, I don't song. think. I don't what think so. <laughs> this song you performed it. <laughs> yeah, but he he knows Alex Gary. Shout out to Alex yeah, Gary. Yeah, no doubt. Who's Alex Gary's rap name? Oof. I don't remember. Yeah, I don't remember. We won't get stuck on that. No, definitely not. But shout but to out say the least, yeah, I went through a I went through a phase actually in like middle school where I was reading a whole bunch of like Shakespeare and all this different like poetry, like real poetry. And I thought that I was going to be a poet for some time. And then, you know, we I think we all Carson, did you did you have a, like a phase in your life where you thought hmm, maybe I'll try music? <laughs> no, I just always like music, but I, yeah. I didn't have I don't have the. I was about to make a myself. statement that every human like goes through a phase of one. Hey, I did. Maybe it's a. I don't know if it's a. Maybe it's a black thing. I was going. I didn't want to say that, but hey, maybe it's a sports <laughs> thing. You know, because I know a lot of athletes. They they try to hand and and rap in and and rhyming and things like that. Yeah, I tried it. So, I tried. I tried. I went through a little poetry phase, and then anytime it comes up on my. Memories timeline on Facebook, I hit delete right away. Oh, <laughs> oh you actually put it out? It was in deep. Yeah, you put it out there. Oh, I just, had a little too much Maya Angelou. This album behind them. <laughs> I am the pentameter, Sean Zaitel. Wait, I am the pentameter hype. You can't right. find it. It's all deleted. So. Oh, okay. Yeah. Hey, hey, what beat did you use, Sean? Mine was 50 shook, Cent in the Club. ones. Sean was on Shook Ones. 50 Cent in the club. I was killing them, too. I mean, like, I, I thought I was going to do something with this. So we found one of them beats that we wouldn't get copyrighted on. Nothing like that. We oh, you? Yeah. yeah, we found one of them. I even tried that. Like, I, I feel like I have a good ear for music. I feel like when I hear something that's got, like, all that, like, I feel like I, I can hear that, right? I tried to do it one time on the computer. I was like... Why ain't this shit happening the way it happened you know, in real life? Like, oh, yeah. We try to make them. Yeah, you try to make them. It's like it was hustle and flow. Oh, my Lord. Like every how could how did I make every loop sounded the same? I was like, all right, I'm done. Yeah. Come on, man. Fruity Loops. Is that what it was called? Uh, oh, man. Uh, yeah, it was Fruity Loops. It was. That's what it was. All right. Carson's yeah, like, yeah, no. no, I was just saying I, I have no I have no clue. Yeah. Remember, Carson's younger than us, Sean. Yeah. Yeah. yeah like, didn't no try that. Leave me alone. Yeah, I got no clue. Yeah, well, yeah, was... we got Sean Zytel, Fight Height. There you go. Yeah. Ooh. You got yeah. it right today. I was gone. Hey, I cringed when you got it wrong last week. I cringed. Yeah, he wasn't even close was, last week. Oh! I was two seconds away from saying cut. And, and y'all, was, y'all rolled with it, so I rolled with it too. So He was way off. Actually, that made me look good. Boxing Voice appreciated that. That's good. good. Oh, okay. Yeah, I'm happy about that. Carson A. Merck, Anthony Bernal. Mm-hmm. Back from a vacation in the mud. We back. Sean was deaf on me, and it almost happened. <laughs> I didn't. I didn't. I, no, no, I didn't. <laughs> I didn't. I didn't. I didn't wish that on you. But. They told me don't down there, don't go down there and drown. And I almost drowned, man. The, you know the water. Our water almost got taken. Yeah, taken water off. was rising. Yeah, we had two feet in the front of the house from rain, and then coastal flooding behind. Got the got a little ocean house. 
that didn't go well. Don't, hey, don't get an ocean house in the south. I was worried for you, man. That nothing. Bro. I wasn't wishing death on you. I, hey, I just said, watch out. I almost lost it, man. We, well, we made, made it, baby. Yeah, we made it. What, what you, this time? This your second time down there. You can you get you going home. This your second time going down there in like less than a year. You think yeah. he's testing the water to officially yeah, move back? It. Yeah, yeah. Uh, you know, we looked into it, not moving back, looking into uh, purchasing property, but uh, I don't think I can deal with the rebuilds, the uh-huh. hurricanes, the flooding, and all that stuff. N- never going back. Uh, Louisiana, love you, but uh, uh, Las Vegas, where it's at, Henderson, <laughs> specifically. I'm not going back. They can have all that. So, did you wrestle with an alligator this time? I know you. Uh, had- I did hold one. Uh, there was one at a local park. I pulled up on the side of the road, skirt, got out, checked out the alligator. You know, you know, that's it. I saw. I saw. Is there was. A, yeah, there was. Was it a? There was a big hog in the water. Was it? Yeah, big hog. Uh, it was. It was. It was wild. It was a bunch of snakes swimming? in the backyard. Or, was he drowning? It was swimming. Nah, he swims in the water. Yeah, they swim. It was crazy. Yeah. Hey, all right. Hey, it was crazy. Hey, gotta go out there. Hey, food hey. is amazing. Good people. The South is the South, though. I I can't live there. I'm sorry. Y'all move too slow for me. I'm a go getter, and y'all just creeping, and I gotta go get it, and I can't be out there. I love my brother and my sister, though, but I can't I can't stay there. Well, real quick, and then we'll get off of this. But like, when you go down there, like, what's the one thing you like? Dang, like this is this is where it's at as far as Louisiana goes. Like, what's one thing that you could promote about Louisiana, right there? The food, the The food, the food. Gotta be the food. Yeah, the food. Yeah, yeah, having never been there, I I just assume it's the food as well. Carson, the best. Best food in the world, man. And he also said the prices is like it ain't oh, even yeah. the prices right. It's like the prices prices <laughs> extra right. Hey, Louisiana people, no disrespect. What I'm about to say, no disrespect. Oh, the prices is like a third world country. I was balling. <laughs> oh, I, hey, wait, what? Hey, put all on it. I put all on it. I was balling out there. I was balling. <laughs> hey, hey, Port Away Podcast, pay me well. Okay. Did you did you meet any anybody out there know about the podcast? No, 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 no. This time, uh, uh, shout out to our, all right. I, I, I had a driver, okay? So <laughs> shout out to my driver. Wait, how you end up with a driver? How that, how that happened? <laughs> all right. Hey, hey, man, I got a driver from the airport. So he, drop what? Go ahead, go ahead. Nah, go ahead. He dropped us off at the airport. You know, he was, he been, he was great. He was taking on tours, which, uh, I got a, a driver was supposed to go from airport to hotel. And he's like, I'm going to take you this. No, 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 no. Go straight from the airport to the hotel. I don't know you like that, player. I will I will sock you in the back of this truck. So he's like, I'm going to take you this. This is Southern Hospitality. I've been going too long, so I'm not used to it. So I thought he was trying to set me up or something. So yeah. I'm on my P's and Q's. So he finally gets to our hotel, taking our bags out, waiting to get our bags out. He's like, I got it for you. I open the door. My man seen Leonard Fournette and lost his mind. Forgot he was working for us. Yeah, he could, hey, hey, he was like, I'm done. Look, yeah. man, hey, take my number. Wild out. So <laughs> he never looked back. <laughs> hey, hey, no, nope. we was just standing there. That's a what? professional, man. You gotta look Sean, Sean. <laughs> you, know, you, know, you know I'm a great tipper. Yeah. You know I'm a great tipper. Yeah. I was hot. What were you about to say, Sean? What were you about to say? Cause like you gotta look back. You gotta say, all right, yeah, I'm with my people. <laughs> da, 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 da. Let me get back with them. Yeah, let me, let me get them. Car. Like, yeah, like you gotta show you professional. He, he just said, man, he said, bump. Hey, bro, remember when you? So, I, hey, I play. Remember when you played in this uh, little league? Yeah, I played on this uh the little di- the little dolphins. You was uh-huh. on the Chiefs. My my man, I ain't trying to get my bags out. I'm paying you. <laughs> Boy, you know, oh, man. Man, I'm showing up late to the airport. I ain't got time for that. <laughs> I'm yeah. getting my bags myself. So, Yo, so we had a we had a good day of, of boxing yesterday. Yeah. Man, that was a great day. Yeah, night of boxing. Yeah, Where was, was it great? Was it great? We say great is great. Overstating that a little bit. Okay, I you're probably good. right. It was a really good night of boxing. We're, yeah. we're hardcore fans, yeah. Yeah. so yeah. really great. I said great. I agreed with it, and then I was like, was it great? Like it was good. It was, I have no complaints, but I'm, I great might be a little a little. Heavy. No, I it was solid, Sean. I mean, Carson, it was solid. Man. Yeah, it was solid for sure. It was good, really good. Where we want to go first? We want to go into the zone. We want to go PBC Showtime. Let's go into Showtime. Okay. Because I think Gary that- Russell, Gary Antoine Russell. Yeah. Hey, and I had this. This was my first question for Sean. Where is he campaigning? What 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 way does he campaign? One forty pounds. It's gonna be one forty. <laughs> yeah. And he fought the guy that Broner fought last. 
Yeah, no, no, no. I saw that. But yeah, yeah I wasn't sure if he was can because I know his weight uh for the his weight for the fight was one thirty seven and some change. So I wasn't sure if he was if this was a catch weight for him. And he was gonna try to be a champion at thirty five or if, if well, I know that all all the guys he's calling out are definitely one forty pounders. He's already talked about Josh Taylor and then of course Adrian Broner, uh, Robert Easter, who moved up from one thirty five to one forty. So yeah, I I don't think there's a single person. Uh, in boxing that watched last night and wasn't impressed with Gary Antoine Russell. I mean, I saw it across the board, you know, all denominations of uh, people we consider PBC or ESPN camp or DAZN. It was across the board that this kid looks special, you know, and uh, it reminded me a lot of his older brother, just uh, a, a super lightweight instead of a featherweight. But hand speed combinations of power, that was spectacular stuff from him. Yeah, how's the whole family have hand speed like that? <laughs> what, were the, what, what kind of games were they playing in the house that like they, they all developed having like super fast hands? Competitive, man. That's yeah. that's a competitive family. The whole fa- it's a whole boxer family in the corner, too. Yeah. It's like the is one of the family members a cut man, too. Like I just see the whole family in the corner. So I'm like, yeah, hey, where's the cut man? They they all do it. They all do it all. OK, they, they don't, they, I don't. I don't. Like I don't. Gary yeah. has. I don't know if Gary has a cut man. I think that Gary has a cut man, but everybody else is like everybody's working for everybody else. Yeah. I feel and like they had the like a whack a mole set up, but they used their hands. Everyone was like <laughs> just knocking it all out, trying to set a high score. But yeah, uh, 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 Carson, you can play. They can play the knife game. Yeah. <laughs> I, we played that with a pencil. I think one time in middle school, and it was yeah, like, I'm yeah, play that with a knife. Hey. <laughs> but they uh, remind me of. Uh, you know, Gary and, you know, his older brother, Gary Russell and Gary Antoine, they're always so proud, like Sean, of, of that American amateur system and, and all the things they accomplished in the amateurs. Mm-hmm. And, you know, Gary Antoine was really talking up his combinations. And, and sometimes it's not always what we see in boxing is uh, four or five, six punch combinations. And it just reminded me of that great American amateur pedigree and guys like Meldrick Taylor and Holyfield and, and, and Leonard would, would run off those combinations beautifully. So it was just nice to see that from him. And, you know, goddamn, 14 and 0, 14 knockouts. I mean, he's just a problem, man. Yeah, he's you can't be mad about that. Yeah. Hey, he, he's nice. He got great footwork. He doesn't waste punches either. I like that. To be such a, he, I mean, what, he's in his 20s? Early and, early and, 20s? And you said doesn't waste punches and he throws a lot of punches. So it's not like he's not throwing punches and he's he's like he's throwing a lot and landing a lot yeah so it's so high efficiency that that really is like my only take from the fight in terms of what can he do better um i think that <clears throat> take it he's 24 sorry Sean. oh Go yeah 24 on. yeah i think that he, he uh he admires his work from time to time and basically that you know he throws punches and then he stays there Nobody's swinging back, but I what I'm always looking to the future. What's something that you're gonna have to improve on? What's something that's not there that that you you need to have? And he's gonna get to a point where he's fighting guys, especially if you're talking about um, Josh Taylor, a guy who is quick on the draw, but also quick on the on the counter as well. You know, so talking about the guy who can counter punch very well, I think that that's something that uh, he should be working on now. Even though guys aren't throwing punches at him, still work on throwing your punches and also moving your head. Or stepping around. I did also notice that it's not that he has bad feet, but I saw that he doesn't have good slash great feet. And I like to see his feet get better. Uh, there were times where I saw him step around and, and make pivots, but I, I like to see you do that more automatically opposed to just to make an opening for offense. I like to see you throw throw your shots and then step around and get off of the line. I feel like, you know, he's, he's kind of right there to be online and be hit after his combinations. But I mean, there's really outside of that. And that's nitpicking at this point, because yeah. if anything, that's something that's going to improve. He's the kind of kid. Again, we talk about his uh, amateur pedigree. Guy, we're the kind of guys that like when you get hit a couple of times, like, damn, what did I get hit with? And you make that adjustment really quickly. And it's not you're not going to get hit very many more times with that same punch or the same combination. So but when you can make a muscle memory now, I think that that's something that that uh, will work to his advantage. But outside of that, I had no complaints. And, you know, uh, not to take a shot at A.B., but he did exactly what A.B. was supposed to do. And at his young age of 24, only 13 fights in at that point, he showed that he was on another level than this Santiago guy. And that was what A.B. was supposed to do. So 
I think that he really did show the separation in terms of levels. Uh, and, and he showed that, you know, I don't think that he's at world championship level yet, but he's he's right around the corner and he's and he's running up very quickly. Uh, all action. Next fight was they were they were banging in that next fight. Yeah. Then catch the next fight. I've been seeing that a lot, like on undercards. It's like guys that are just bangers and, and it's they swinging and they hitting hard, too, which is pretty cool. It's, it makes for an entertaining fight, entertaining night. That's why I said that's why I said we had a great night of boxing. Yeah. And I guess I had to pull it back a little bit, but just I'm a little bit. I was looking at, you know, the action in, in the night and all that kind of stuff. And then the main event ended up being a historic one. Man. No need to. Hey, no no hey. no I'm hyped right now. Podcast, man. 38 years old, baby. Doing it for the old folks. I ain't going to front, man. I, I wrote him off a little while ago. I feel bad saying Everyone it. did. I, I yeah, yeah. It. it wouldn't be me if I didn't say nah. that. I, I, you know, because I feel like I wrote him off and I just was like, all right, yeah, he's on his last leg. I'm like, wait a minute. No need to fall last night. He won. No need to fall last night. He won. What? Hey. What? Fight of, the, uh, fight of the year. That's supposed to be me and Errol Smith Jr. What you mean? You know, like, and he's and he's continuing to do it against young guys. You know what I mean? It's like he's not just doing this against anybody. On his, usually, when you're on your last leg out, you're just like, I'll take a fight here and there. Like he's taking big challenges and conquering them, which is awesome. Yeah, yeah guy looked, fights yesterday, undefeated champion. I mean, yeah, he looked explosive last night. It was exciting. Yeah, it, it was just hyped up. It's like. He went back 10 years. Oh. He looked good last night, man. Yeah. Look, counter, he looked good. His yeah. counter counters were on the money early. And then even when he started to maybe start to take that next step and be a little more offensive, man, he hit him with some shots. That left <laughs> hand, that the first knockdown, that might have been one of the quickest left hands I've seen put somebody <laughs> down. It was, I was like, wait a second, did he get hit? <laughs> they showed the replay in slow motion. It's like, ah, that's when we need the slow motion. What's crazy is I, I kind of felt the same thing. I was like, I had to rewind. I was like, wait a minute. What did he get hit with? It was, it was a fast, hey, that's the Filipino flash. Yeah, true. He's a legend, man. I, I was so excited following that fight. Like, you know, I, just to spiel on him for a minute, I remember when he won his first title. He, Victor Chinian was the man in 2007. Mm. You know, he was the the knockout artist little guy and he was getting main event dates on Showtime and Nonito came in as a replacement and iced him, iced him with it. And from then on, it was the, the birth of a legend. Yeah. And he goes on to win all these great fights. He knocks out Montiel on HBO and and then he wins in all these divisions, becomes already a Hall of Famer almost 10 years ago. But then he falls in love with his power. He gets, he loses to Rigan Diaw, goes through this, this really bad, you know, yeah. low and down in his career. And to me, last night was a celebration of Nonito Donaire and his yeah. beautiful career. It, it reminded me of, uh, you know, uh, uh, when Roberto Duran fought Davey Moore and, and just, you know, put on a great performance in the garden. It was like, because Duran had already been knocked out by Hearns. He had done the no mas. And so people had written him off. And now he fights this guy who's undefeated, who, you know, Davey Moore and Nordino Bali, they may not be the, you know, pound for pound or the elite of the elite, but they were undefeated young world champions. And Nonito comes in and just has one of the best performances of his career. And it reminded me of when Cotto beat up Sergio Martinez, just these guys who have beautiful careers and they go through this time where it looks like you write them off. And then in the end, they, they come out and prove their greatness once again, just, you know, what a performance by Nonito Donaire. His yeah. power at those weights is, is legendary, and um, I was just happy for him. I'm really I mean, happy for him. I mean, even go back to, we always say, you know, to take away lessons, you prefer it be in a win than a loss. But even in the loss he has in 2019 to Inoue, like, it was a great fight. He busted Inoue's orbital bone. So it's like, it, was, it wasn't like he just got blown out and we're like, eh, you know, he's old. Just kind of pitch him aside. But, no, that that was great last night. So the the one... I wouldn't even call it a controversy, but the one thing is the second knockdown mm-hmm. that the bell, you, you can hear the bell go and then the punch lands. I think we all kind of feel similar that they were exchanging. So it might not have been as egregious if it wasn't. Yeah. I'm, I'm, <clears throat> excuse me. I'm an advocate of uh, Jack Reese and I, it's, it's just coincidence that I'm speaking on referees again this, this week, but I'm an advocate for for uh, Jack Reese. I really like his uh, refereeing. I think that he controls the 
the the ring and the in the action. He's I, I feel like he steps in when he's supposed to. I feel like he always looks out for the safety of both fighters and things like that. And so when the knockdown clearly happens after the bill, I thought that Jack made the responsible right decision to call. And that's that's a very quick and hard decision to make. And I don't think he missed the bell. I think he understood that the bell rung, but they were exchanging and they were finishing that exchange. Jack Reese is solid. And to me, he made the right decision by, by calling that a knockdown and counting. And, uh, you know, that's kind of, it just was kind of just in the motion. It happened the, that the bell was ringing at that point in time. I, I do know that. And he was right there for it. A lot of refs understand when they hear that clap, that it's 10 seconds. Let me inch a little closer. Let me get, get ready to step in. And it just was one of those things where they were they were finishing an exchange, their rings, and then right after that, the punch comes. You know, so I, I, I do understand where the controversy could come from. But to me, it was the right decision. I, I feel like I'm unbiased in saying that. Um, I don't feel like I'm, I'm biased for for Jack Reese and feeling like, you know, he can do no wrong. And I'm also not biased on on, on um, the Filipino Flash's behalf and saying, you know, I want him to win the fight. I mean, I, I'm a big fan of his. We go, I go as far back as Vic Darchini and went with with uh, with uh, Don, No Nido. Like back then, it was like, who is this kid? And he just kind of blew up after that fight. And so he just has always been one of those guys that I always look forward to watching fight. And then, like I said, going, when I say I, I wrote him off, I just, that's 2007 when he blew up. This is, this is, God dang, it's 14 years later. And, and we're still talking about this kid, you know, uh, outside of him, who else are we really talking about? But Mayweather, you know, there's not yeah. too many guys, you know, the rest of us were just showing up on the scene, you know what I mean? So, that's why, uh, you know, I, I just feel like I'm not biased and feeling like that was the right call. I think that it was. And I just think that it was it happened to be the timing. And uh, that's how it goes sometimes. It, it kind of caught me off guard a little bit that it was after the bell. Like he hit him, he goes down. And I was like, wait a second. The bell had rung. I was like, how is he just like in a heap right now on the ground? And then uh, he was he was in bad shape, though, after that second knockdown. He kind of couldn't really figure out how to get to the corner and where he was going. And obviously some of that was confusion because. The round had ended, so Donaire was kind of in the corner. So there was, but he was in bad shape. And then, and Donaire, you know, nailing the coffin after that. But Carson, go ahead, Sean, go ahead. Sean always said uh, one of those cases of know your know your ref. Jack yeah. Reese gave him more than enough chances because hey, re- Jack Reese said, "Go here, go there." Yeah, he hit him with a cha cha slide. Hey, yeah. I would have been like, "Yeah, man, that's it." <laughs> Jack Reese gave him. Ch- <laughs> You, I, sense, man. Honestly, I we we talk about stoppages or, or kind of that it's there's not really like a clear yeah. book on how you do it. But it, yeah. and, like you said, if he had stopped right there, I wouldn't have had any issue. I wouldn't have been like, whoa, that's way too early because he's like was all <laughs> over the place. So I'm like, yeah, I, I could see it. It's kind of like new protocol. And it's not it's not new because this is 2021. It's I think maybe 2018, they started to implement that new system of make a guy walk and give him directions. And and if he's coherent and follows your directions, that means he can continue to fight. Of course, along with him following directions, you got to make sure that he's stepping correctly and things like that. So again, when you talk about Jack Reese giving this guy directions and hey, come here, go there, come here. He's, He's very clear and concise. (laughs) <laughs> and I need come to me, you know, so I said, give me your gloves. And he had his gloves like off. So he's like, no, no, no. Give me it's your like, gloves. <laughs> and it's like, yeah, I would have waited. On. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I, no. I, I, I would have been fine either way. But then and, and listen, this is why I this is why I asked um, uh, uh, Sean who his coach is, because a lot of times you get to the point that no needles that a lot of guys cannot pull it together. They can't pull it together through an entire training camp. Even especially when you get that age, your body breaks down throughout camp, recovery and things like that. Needs more recovery and all that kind of stuff. And it's like a lot of times when guys, when you see an older guy come to the ring, it's not even the fact that they don't want it anymore. It's that they tried to pull it together in camp and they tried to pull it together to get to that moment. And it's just so much goes into it that they can't really pull it together. So I said, yeah, who can we uh, attribute this, this not really comeback, but this 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 rebirth yeah historic legend and 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 no needle donaire you say yo his wife's in the in the corner and it's like 
yo, he's there, whatever he has to ha- had to have done at this point to really pull it together and be some young lions out there. So I really just want to give a, a, a hand clap to, uh, to Nonito and, and his entire team. Absolutely. Uh, I would push the button, but I'm not sure which one. Yeah. Oh, there you go. Oh, there it is. Now I would want a Rigo rematch too. So people talk about the Donaire re- or uh, Anouye rematch, but I would, uh, I would like to see him fight Rigo and Diao again if Rigo can beat uh, Casamero. So yeah, yeah, yeah. There's some, there's some, there's some action-packed matches up that you can make in that division for sure. Yeah. I mean, the dude was top three pound for pound for a few years there with. Floyd Mayweather and Andre Ward, and now them two guys are retired, or, or you know, Floyd kind is, of allegedly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Floyd's doing his thing this weekend, but yeah. So that's that's yeah. this weekend. Yeah, Sunday, yeah. I think actually. Oh wow, I got which something is to do. weird. Hey, he's coming. Quick. Yeah, we got to record on Sunday. We got you say I got something to do. Yeah, I got something. To do. <laughs> oh yeah, we do. <laughs> and then move. Let's get into I, I, get into I, I the zone. As they say get yeah. the fight. I know so. Oh, the zone. I was gonna say get into the zone as they sometimes have made the. The pun for, but our guy Shane Moses Jr. Our guy, yeah, hell of performance. Uh, yeah. The last five. I don't know why you changed it up. Yeah, strat. I, I would say strategy was was a bigger concern for me than performance. Just I had him. I had Shane winning four of the first five rounds, and then they like kind of flipped the switch, and he starts to be more aggressive. And we mentioned before, pretty much every time we've talked about Shane Jr. Sweet and low, my man, that. When he's more offensive focused, his defense really suffers. And so when they have him push the pace and try to dictate the action, yeah. you start to see the defense and quickly started to um, – I, I had him winning every one of the last five rounds. Yeah, and I, and I, I told Sean I felt like he needs to up the sparring partners. I mean, I'm not going to say that. has nothing to do with me. I would love for him and Sean to share a camp together mm-hmm. just so he can get more elite level of sparring and intense for – 10 to 12 rounds. Yeah. I don't know how that works, Sean. I, I really don't know, but I just feel like he needs more of that. Sparring is kind of like growing up. And 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 what I mean by that is like, as, as you mature as a young man, I'm sure that we could all look back now at when we were 15. And it's just like, yo, I'm not, not, I don't do things the way I used to do when I was 15. And it's like, you just go through some things, you know, when you, let's look back to when we're 21. We, we just aren't the same individuals that we were when we were 21. You never know when that maturation process is going to happen. You never know when it's happening. All you do is you look up and you're like, man, I've gotten better. I'm a, I'm a, I'm a little more, more mature than I used to be, you know? And then you may be able to look back and, 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 and contribute it to, oh, yeah, that happened. And I did learn from that. I don't do that anymore. And so on and so forth. So that's how sparring is. So when you get eight weeks sparring with some high level guys, you may start camp right here. But seeing seeing those fast guys, seeing those guys with with the with the great counters and the and the good movement around the ring, all that kind of stuff, you your body just starts to mature, your mind and your eyes start to mature. And then next thing you know, you at week week five or week six in camp, and you game with these guys. They step over, you step over right there with them. You know, they they throw a right hand, and now you pulling back doing your thing because you pulled something. From those guys, a lot like they said, the old heads kick game. Like it's Kirby. Like, yeah, like you hear that game all the time and it don't and it don't really show up. And then out of nowhere it shows up, you mature it. And the same thing in the boxing ring is like you go through some fights, you go through some camps, and you just start to mature and grow as a fighter. And I do think that if he gets into the camp with, with other guys who have a higher level of competing and training a higher level of training in training camp it will it will actually pull him up and he'll perform better because he's had to have done that in camp and it will show up in the ring and, and, fight night. and you also have correct me if i'm wrong but when you're so you're going to learn from your opponents and you're going to learn from your sparring partners yeah One of those is no risk sparring you have yeah. no risk of a bad performance or a loss on your record or anything like that you just have the ability to learn. Mm-hmm. Obviously, he's able to learn in these fights. You know, Brandon Adams, obviously, quickly yesterday. Yeah. But in those fights, you're risking losing because you're processing yes. and, and gaining more information. So, um, no, I, I, my Kirby analogy, I think, was strong as far as sparring. You know, absorb different people, things they can teach you. So, um, yeah, uh, he's... Oh, I didn't yeah, get you got it. I'm, telling, I'm like, slow it I down. I thought you were talking about the vacuum. No, I'll, yeah. also shout out to Kirby Vacuum. Yeah. But, uh, I, I, I let it go. 
<laughs> yeah, but the uh, no Shane Shane is very talented. I think the strategy or the game plan is what what did him in yesterday. But I, you can't attribute it to that because you're still in the ring. So if you feel the game plan's off, sometimes as the fighter, Sean, you can speak to that. Sometimes you have to say, "Nah, this this isn't working. I'm getting tagged a little bit too much. I need to adjust." You guys, both of you guys, said, "Well, why did why did he change? Why did he change? He had no reason to change. If it's work, working, don't." Don't try to fix it. The guy wasn't doing nothing to make, force him to change. And what I look, I turned around to you guys and I told a lot of guys in camp, they think that we're going to start at one level and then we're going to, we're going to switch it up and raise it as the fight continues. You talk about, uh, you know, when you talk about drowning the guy, taking the guy to the deep waters, all that kind of stuff. Basically the process is we're going to go at one tempo, one speed rounds, one through three or four. And then we'll, when then we'll turn up the fire there's no reason to turn up the fire. I get it. That was what you trained for. But in the moment, you got to realize, like, hey, just, let's just stay here until until he gives us an adjustment to make. But they they had their minds in camp mode and camp mode was we're going to turn it up and we're going to knock him out near the end of the, in the, in the near the end of the fight. There hey, was a six round. Sean, he came out. He Shane turned it up immediately. Yeah. Was yeah. throwing haymakers. I'm like, yeah. well, what's going on? Yeah, you adjusted to not needing to make an adjustment. Like yeah. typically, we talk about boxing as adjusting to the adjustment. Yeah. There was no adjustment. It was like, you. You were like, all right, I'm going to change this. It's like, wait, what? What? Why? Why would you do that? Like you're winning the fight, but yeah. kind of is then, what it is. And that, and I love that part about boxing too, because boxing is just so strategical, and it's so um, it's it's very and in, in, it's a very intelligent um, battle. Uh, and the funny thing is, is that the battle is not always with the opponent and it's not always with, uh, sometimes it's with the referees. Sometimes it's with, you know, at the end of the fight ends up being with the judges, you know, in this case, I really do think that they worked against themselves to a certain extent. Obviously you say, Hey, Shane's got to know, got to know, be able to realize and, and understand that, you know, Hey, this is not working or, you know, Hey, let's dial it back. So on and so forth. So, you know, like you said, Carson, it's a learning lesson, but you you hate for those learning lessons to come. And now you're, you know, you got five losses and, and now your back's really against the wall. Four, four losses? So you yeah, have five? Four. 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 Yeah. And that, that was a big tweet, Sean, like big change. Like yeah. in the Earl uh, Porter fight, y'all was tweaking something, he tweaked something. You yeah. tweaked something, he tweaked something. Yeah. That was just a little bit. He like cranked it up. Yeah, yeah. completely, there completely. Was no switched. reason to go to the max. Yeah. And, and one reason why I really love my fight with, with Earl Spence Jr. is because I think a lot of the tweaking that he and I both were doing were like in the moment. And we were yeah. both were getting was thinking. very good information in the corner. But I swear to God, like we, we're in the moment doing stuff and it's like just adjustment, adjustment, adjustment. You know what I mean? So I, I love that part about boxing and I, and I love that feeling. There's, a, there's actually a feeling you get. You can see the other guy performing at a really high level. You're like, let me get with this. You know what I mean? So anyway. <laughs> hey, the first five rounds, Shane, you look like a hell of you. Yeah. Hey, that first five rounds, stick to that shit. That's your shit right there. Yeah, yeah. no doubt about it. But and then the co main event, Melissa Hernandez. Oh man, my lady. Hey. <laughs> I, I love the intro. Like we talked about it at the time. If that intro, if you follow that up with a win. That's one of the smoothest intros you could possibly have. Dancing all the way to the ring, having a good time, joking, smiling. My problem is even right now, like y'all don't see me, but right now I'm dancing with her because yeah. she was really getting it coming she to the ring. The, the yeah. music, My thing is, the yeah. move, all this and that. I didn't really know that much about her, unfortunately. And she, former I, champion. She, I bought into it all. Yeah, <laughs> right. I, I, remember, I walked out the room at the beginning of the, of the opening round. And oh, when I came downstairs? back, the energy was not for her at all. Yeah. <laughs> and I wasn't expecting that because I didn't know that much about her. Yeah. She had to tell Cameron what she hey, All the girls turned I, on her and everything. Apparently, yeah. she was so bad that it was like, hold on, she's 40 years old. Hold yeah, on. I got hot. I said, that's the definition of not growing up. Hey. Chantel Cameron uh, did her thing, though. Absolutely. The, the girl who retained nice. her WBC uh, uh, 140 pound title, she. I, I was impressed by, you know, you, you, Katie Taylor and Clarissa Shields are deservedly the top two pound for pound women's fighters. But sometimes they, uh, I'm not even going to criticize the quote, but 
she would, they'll run off combinations. And Chantel Cameron had a very professional, like come forward place. She was more about placing her shots than uh, running off combinations. So yeah, I just liked her left hook to the body and the way she was coming forward. And um, it's, it's a style I haven't uh, seen a whole lot in women's boxing. I, Taylor and, and Shields rely more on their boxing ability and their hand speed and their combination. This is what I'm trying to get at. And yeah. Chantel Cameron was more come forward and place the hook to the body. And um, it, it was fun to see that in, in, a, in a women's boxing title fight, you know. Women's boxing is changing, man. Mm-hmm. And, and what's our young lady out there in New York? What's her name? Amanda uh, Serrano. Amanda And Sanisa. Yeah, I'm, we're, starting to see, we're starting to see these women perform like in in box i'm talking about so what i'm talking about is we've gone from an era in boxing where we saw a lot of women be very wild and i'm just going to throw as many punches as i can and i'm going to take them and and give them take them and give them we're starting to see women's boxing come out of this rock and sockum uh era and go into a um, this is what level i'm on right now where where women are really starting to separate themselves from in terms of who's good and who's elite out there. And I really would place Cameron in that elite level. I think that she's got a lot of intangibles that makes her elite. Uh, her boxing ability, along with her controlled aggression, uh, was was very impressive last night. And um, again, we're going to, I'm going to use these buttons today, man. I'm going to clap it up for women's boxing. On a big stage too. Yeah. Oh, man, on, a, on a nice little card. Yeah. Yeah. So. Shout out and, to the zone for that. Yeah, for, for, for women boxing now to be getting co-main events and main events on boxing is, is well-deserved. And uh, and again, I'm not trying to push the, the whole women's movement and all that kind of stuff. I'm simply saying I'm impressed and I'm very proud because I didn't always recognize, I didn't always, I didn't really care. That may sound bad, but once I had to care uh, was when I started to do commentary and things like that. And that's when I started to take notice. And upon taking notice, I'm very proud of what women's boxing has to offer the world because it, it looks very good and the future looks very promising. I would agree. I would agree wholeheartedly. And there's also, there's nothing wrong with pushing the women's boxing agenda because it has been neglected for so long. Yeah. So now to maybe even be over positive about it, there's there's nothing wrong with that. You're kind of well, hey, hey. turning it out. Just, just, just like I said, hey man, I rolled off no needle, don't air. I didn't have to say that, but it's just something inside me yeah. that tells me, yo, you got to keep it real. And, yeah. and so, upon keeping it real, I just need everybody out there to say, oh, Sean's just jumping on it. No, Sean's, Sean's not jumping on it. Sean's recognizing something. I'm letting y'all know, like I'm not jumping on this boat. I haven't, I didn't recognize that the boat was selling. And now that I have, I, I just want to salute it and, and tell all those women out there to keep going. Uh, I, and I do understand that women's boxing is different from men's boxing. You don't have too many young women that are interested in boxing. And so it's like they get into a late the experience and all that kind of stuff. I get all that. But where, where, where I see boxing going now for women is awesome. And then I think the other side of that, too, is when you have women like Amanda Serrano, you have women like um, Katie and women like Clarissa. Now you got women for uh, for these young ladies to look up to and say, oh, yeah. I can do that too. So I think that women's boxing is going somewhere. And so I'm yep. just going to say I'm proud of it. And it's set up to have some big matches down the road. For yeah. sure. Yeah. 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 That too. That's exciting. Yeah, for yeah. sure. Some exciting matchups. And then we move main event. Uh oh. John Zytel's future yeah. pound for pound Z- number Z- one Z- fighter. We're going to get an Haney. argument. Hey, I already told everybody we're getting an argument. I was very excited uh, last night. Really, really fun fight. I think, I think the fit, uh, the fans, Mandalay Bay, they loved it. I think everybody got a more exciting fight than they were they were thinking they were going to get. You know, I, I picked Haney by stoppage, and uh, between rounds five and seven, it looked like he was going to get one. And I was very surprised that Lenaris was holding up to the punishment. I know Devin's not known as a puncher, but this was a guy who had been stopped five times previous. And, you know, ringside... It, 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 the punches, they don't look, they look like they hurt. Sometimes speed is power and, you know, just being sharp and so accurate. I know the, those punches get the respect, but actually Linares kept marching forward through him and his, his durability really surprised me. But the, the story of the fight, you know, the judges scored at 116, 112, 115, 113. This was one of the easiest fights to score. I thought first nine rounds dominant by Haney last three rounds, pretty dominant by Jorge Linares. So, 
Uh, cards were a little closer than I thought. But for the first nine rounds, Devin looked like everything he could possibly be, you know, hyped up as. And then he gets some big growing pains those last three rounds. And I would just say uh, to a lot of people who I understand where they're coming from about the criticisms on the performances, you know, this was his trial by fire. You know, Ryan Garcia got dropped in his trial by fire. Uh, uh, Tiafimo Lopez had a tougher fight than expected in 12 rounds with Nakatani. So just my thing is I'm really looking forward to his next fight to see how is he after that experience, you know, because we saw the level that Lopez jumped to after having that tough 12 round uh, championship caliber fight with Nakatani. So if, if the Devin Haney that showed up the first nine rounds can fight like that, all 12 and, and his, uh, and, and he, his confidence has grown after going through that, man, he's, he's a problem. He's a problem. And I know the thought is Ryan Garcia, Tiafimo Lopez, Javante Davis, you, they land those kind of bombs and the kid would have been out of there. Yeah. And perhaps that's true for last night, but I don't think the kid that showed up last night is going to show up in the next fight. I think he's going to be better. I have Preach one it, boy. I have one immediate question. I have one question about your, your statement there. Yeah. Did you say that it looked like Haney was going to get a stoppage in the middle yeah. of the fight? He was, I, Carson, you guys, yeah, he was, he was different there. on TV, you know, but yeah, he was there. So it looks, it, different. yeah, it, I mean, I he was get, I get and he's doing what's necessary to break a guy down. He's killing his body and touching him upstairs. It's just Lenaris. Yeah, I just yeah, I felt like there were two rounds where he kind of like really took control. It's not like he stepped on the gas pedal, but I felt like there were two in mi- rounds in the middle of the fight, where late uh, late middle, uh, like seven and eight, I think it was, where he really took control, and I and it made me raise my eyebrow. I was like, I was like, oh, he's trying to stop Jorge Linares, maybe because it looked like he was gonna come on like that. I, I, I did see that, Sean. Maybe, maybe I missed something, but I, at no point in the fight yesterday, was like, eh, I don't know, Lenares is in trouble. He might no, I'm fight. not saying that. Well, I'm that, not saying that's a stoppage that. then. If no. it's going to be close to a stoppage, he has to be in trouble. Yeah, I've never seen him. I, and, yeah. I'm not going to jump on what Sean said in terms of him. I didn't see him stopping Jorge, but there were two points in, in the uh, middle, late middle of the fight where I was like, he just came on strong. He landed a lot of clean shots. I was like, Oh, he's about to try to stop Jorge, and I thought he was going to continue to turn it on or turn it up. Uh, is what is what I saw that Sean yeah. Probably saw as well. Yeah, um, you are I, right, Carson. I, never had him out on his feet. Nothing like that. You're right. Yeah, I just I I, I saw one guy wobbled yesterday, and it wasn't Jorge Linares. Um, <laughs> I, I, I I saw. I'll say this: yeah, that, I mean, he had a really good performance yesterday. Like you said, he best performance I've ever seen him have. Yeah, really, oh, really. Be, that's the best I've ever seen him perform. Uh, I love, let me, let me read it real quick. Cause I love that you said, you guys said that reflexes. I mean, we can see that every time he was offensively defensive aware, kind of like what I was talking about with uh, Gary in the beginning of the show. The yeah, thing yeah. is Gary doesn't have that kind of style. So it's just going to take you some working, some working on, but you're going to get to a point where you're going to throw a punch and a guy is just going to come back with something. And you got to be ready for that. Um, he's got a great boxer's eye. It, he he wasn't he was throwing the right punches and landing them at the right times. You know there were po- there were points where he threw a punch he would make Jorge lo- miss and he would come right back. That's a, a boxer's eyes very instinctive. It's something that you can't really teach. Some guys learn it, but it's something that you're kind of gifted with. And he has that. Um, I think that he can take a punch outside of that one punch. Uh, he, 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 there there were a couple of them. Exchanges. There were some exchanges through through the fight. And I was like, oh, 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 but he was okay through a majority of those exchanges. Um, and he's got great punch selection. I mean, we I saw him throwing some beautiful uppercuts. That's a punch that you really have to say, you know, this dude is open for uppercut. I'm gonna throw it, you know, and not too many guys. I'm gonna raise my hand. I'm not really that comfortable throwing the uppercut because I know it's a it's a punch that if you don't land, you you could possibly be vulnerable on the other side of that. So I don't really like throwing that punch. So those were the, the few good things that I saw. Uh, Best jab in boxing, according to Sergio Mora. And a very good jab. Is, <laughs> I really wouldn't say the best jab in boxing, but I, wouldn't. I mean, I, w- I would say top two, top top three, top four. You know, he's definitely top five in the jab area. Not not too many guys are even throwing it as consistently as he's throwing it. So I, I really like that he, he utilizes his jab. He understands that he's got reach. He's got speed. He's got quickness. And it all starts with his jab. And so I really like that he throws his jab. 
And he, that that last night was the best performance I've ever seen Devin Haney ever. Yeah. Uh, he, when, yeah, when you're punt when you're when he's throwing, he's already predicting what you're gonna do. Like that's talent. The kid is something else. Mm-hmm. When that performance last night, he drops out of my top 25 to my top 30. Uh oh, hold on, wait a minute. <laughs> yes, yes, hold on. Yes, you went the wrong yes. way. Yeah, yeah, I know. I know. You went the wrong way. Hold on. <laughs> I just said dropped. Hold on, because this is the Port Away podcast. So you're gonna be this is gonna be a reflection of the entire show. He went from your no, 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 this is Anthony. And I'll take it. <laughs> so he out of your top 25. Yes. And and but he went up. So no, I didn't say that. No, he said he like, went down. Oh, he went down. All right, all right. That that didn't make sense to me. Okay. All yeah, right. I say well, that's, top, yeah, top 30, Ant. That's that's pretty good. Top 30 pound for pound. Yeah. yeah that's that's top, 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 I just man at this I'm hearing point, it right. Yeah. 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 So my problem was, and me and Sean talked about this. When he got hit, he was mentally, he was fucked up. He never recovered from that. His body recovered. He never recovered from that the whole night. Mm-hmm. Walking into the locker room. He limp, he was in bed last night. He's messed up. He mentally, he is messed up from that. He never been hit like that. And that was a 35-year-old. Hold on. It takes some time. You think even now he's still messed up from that? It takes it'll him be, time. Be he's been so dominant. Years, so. He's been so do- he's never been in that situation. Yeah. Like even in his, his corner, his corner, even his dad showed maturity. I mean, immaturity. They didn't know what to do. They didn't know how to calm him down. He was all over. He was twitching. He didn't. He was mentally. He was effed up. That was a jaw dropping experience for me because I did not expect that to happen. When you it's crazy when you got that kind of experience but you don't have that experience, how you react. And it was all mental for him. His body recovered, but mentally he was messed up. That blew, that blew me. I was blown away. I couldn't believe what I was seeing. And it's going to sound bad. I expected it from BH, but I didn't expect it from Devin. And it sounds bad, but Bill, his dad just does not have the experience on this level to, to take him where he needs to go. And especially for that moment, they both kind of panicked and didn't know what to do, but that worried me seeing him panic the way that he panicked and, and then going into the 11th, the way he was in the 11th round that worried me. Now we're saying that he's good now because he <laughs> made it through it. You know. I think he got some good sleep. I think I- he- I'm not my, gonna my, my boy, but I feel like my dude got, got him a woman and all that kind. He would think he was good. You know, I think he got some TLC and he cool now. Uh, and my, that go home with him. One of one of one of my uh, one of my concerns with we, we talk about boxing a lot of times when you're doing post fight interviews, a lot of it's posturing. You don't want to be too vulnerable. You don't want to be this. But to say afterwards, yeah, you know, he rocked me, but I wasn't hurt. I was like, you were. And, and, but it's fine, though. You people get hurt. Boxing people get hurt all the time. Yeah, that's be, the maturity level. Yeah, but as to be a man, just accept it. Yeah, but to be adamant, I, I wasn't hurt. It's like, sir, we literally saw you wobble, and hey, Jorge Linares gave you I the got it you to the corner. That was the best part of the whole night. And and to say no, I wasn't hurt. That I was like, are you telling yourself that you weren't hurt, or do you actually think that you weren't hurt because you were clearly hurt by a shot? But yeah, I I don't know. I I don't think. I don't think he dropped for me. I think he's about what I expected. I think he's a talented young fighter. I, I don't think he beats Teofimo Lopez. I don't think he beats Tank Davis, but I think Car- he probably beats a lot of the other guys. Carson, how, how do you feel? I, I said, I feel he needs to t- go the Loma route. Do not go Teo. Do not go Tank. I feel like the R- Loma route, route is the best for him. Yeah. Eventually, you go. You got to fight those guys, but right now, and he, he's, we're done with that building shit. It's time top. It's top five or nothing. We done. You don't need to go down there fighting. Nope. It's top five. You want you the guy? Get, you, get step up. I think he beats Ryan Garcia. Yeah, yeah, all, all that route. I, I, home, I, homie's gonna give him hell. Is he defined now by this tenth round? Um, it shows he's shitty. Uh, shows he's shitty. It, it might oh, be shitty. A, I thought you said it shows he's shitty. Oh, <laughs> oh, he's shitty. No, no, no. no Sean Porter probably he's shitty. No, the kids um, no I, um, defined might be a bit harsh, but it's something where people that want to criticize Devin Haney will be able to say, oh, look at the 10th round. Look what happened. But no, he's going to define him by that 10th round. I'm, if they want to. 
Send it think- to the Way podcast right now that yeah. everyone's going to jump on that 10th round a lot like Ant and say he can't beat uh, Tank Davis, who I'm going to go on record for saying nobody in the world can be at 135 and he's moving up to 140. So oh, man. nobody can beat him. Nobody can beat him at 130. I don't think he can make 130. Nobody can beat him at 135. I don't know if he can make 135. <laughs> and nobody can beat him at 140. I hope he can make 140. <laughs> he's got 140 and 135. He's good. But, Outside of Tank Davis, I think that he, Devin Haney, is in a great fight with Tiafimo Lopez. He's in a great fight with Dev, with, with, excuse me, with uh, Ryan Garcia. He's in a great fight with Lomachenko. If Lomo's the same, I think he's in a he's in a really great fight with Lomo. I think that that's Nakatani would be another exciting yeah. fight. Yeah, that's dude. That's a that's a that, 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 that might be the route they should take. But yeah, yeah. After he fights Lomo, but I, but here's my thing. I don't want people to jump on that tenth round and say, uh, like you just said, he's chinny. Just because he got caught with a shot, don't mean he's chinny. He never recovered, Sean. You got caught with Earl Spence, and you recovered. But. I think that it was the moment. And I think that having gone through that moment, it's going to take some time. Not saying, I'm not saying that that moment happened last night and he's ready for it now today, but I think it's going to take some time. And when he comes back to the ring, I'm right there with you, uh, Sean. He's coming back to the ring, a different Devin Haney. I think he's coming to the, he's coming back to the ring with everything that he had, but I think he's going to have a little bit more now having gone through that experience, as long as he handles that experience the way that he's supposed to. Sean Porter. So my thing is, oh, I say take the Loma route. I think you need a couple of more. You need to go with guys not as much powerful, power because Tank with Earl Spence. I was telling somebody, or maybe Carson, there's four guys that will fight Earl Spence. Fight Earl Spence. Keith, Keith Thurman, Sean mm-hmm. Porter, mm-hmm. Terrence Crawford, and Kale Brook. Mm-hmm. Dang Garcia, Mike Garcia, I'll punch him, and everybody else will punch Pacquiao. him back. Take care, all, yeah, oh, yeah. Manny, Manny Pacquiao. Pacquiao. and put Manny in there. Yeah, but I just got to give well, him he credit. Fought him. He, yeah, he fought he, him, Sean. Yeah, he fought. I him. don't care. I ain't talking about now. When he was in the yeah. ring, he fought him. So yeah. five guys in oh, the. No, you know what? I'm I'm all the way wrong. I'm all the way messed up. My fault. In my head, in my, I was, oh, yeah, I was yeah. in my all head. All right, so five I, guys in my head. I was Terrence Crawford, El Kill I was like. Yeah, oh, gotcha. my fault. Right, so no, five you, guys that right. will fight him. Everybody else in the welterweight division. Yeah, I think you get you feel that fucking power and you go into a shell mode. Yeah, I yeah. feel before this, I felt like Devin Haney would have gotten that ring and and did try to do his thing against Tank. Uh-huh. I feel like Tank hit him with something. He might just try to survive uh-huh. because the mentally he what he went through in the tent. Because mm-hmm. uh, you know Tank got that's different power, man. Mm-hmm. That's that Earl Spence. Yeah. Oh, or just say like Deontay Wilder? That's different yeah. power. He's got a thump, man. Uh, uh, yeah, Tank. I just think once Tank's touched him, he's going to say, nah, I can't go out like this. And now I got to survive. I, 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 do, I do like that Lomachenko route also because Tiafimo's 24 and Tank is 26 and Devin is 22. So that might be wise too because those guys are, are into their grown man strength more than Devin is right now. I don't think he's fully grown into his body in the way that Tiafimo has at 35. So I like that fight. I like the Lomachenko fight. So yeah, I, you know, I, I know Loma would want to win a belt back. So and yeah. no matter where he goes, they're all big fights. They're yeah. all money makers. Yeah. Hey, I, I, hey man, your tickets are outrageous. Yeah. I can out for a day. DHP from DAP promotion. Hey, you out of? I can't. I can't mess with it. You can't. Hey, Chantel, what look the, me up with tickets. I can't afford it. What's the promotional company? <laughs> DHP, right? Uh, promotion. Okay, because you. It sounds like a. Uh, I said, I said it could be airport that you. Yeah, you sound like you was shouting <laughs> out of airport. airport codes. <laughs> yeah. Hey, my man, prices is crazy. Yeah. I, you, I'm a broke boy. I'm gonna say it right now because I know his dad would be like, "Well, you can't. You ain't got the money." Hey, I'm broke boy. I can't afford that. That's fine. That. I don't. <laughs> that uh, yeah. I I think I think Lomachenko. I think that's an exciting fight. I I'll never criticize a young fighter for wanting to fight great fighters and for saying they're ready for great fighters. We say that about Boots. We say that about Virgil Ortiz. We say that about Conor Ben. We say that about. Tiafimo, Devin Haney, all those guys. But if you're not like, like Zytel said, he's still the youngest of all of them. So it's okay not to go right into those fights, in my opinion. Mm-hmm. But when you continually say, nah, I want this guy. If Tiafimo is next, I want Tiafimo next. If he's next, I want him next. Yeah. But then, then you're accelerating yourself and you're saying, okay, I have to get this fight next. Rather than maybe a more natural route where you can 
um, get some of those guys. Linares, I think, I don't. I, I mentioned last week. I don't really know how to evaluate how big of a win that is for Devin because Linares is older. Um, he had he's coming off some. Obviously, he had, was coming off some wins, but he had some some oh. losses in there. And he was a huge underdog, it, just literally by the numbers. He was the big underdog. So I, I don't know. I just, I think it was it was a good win, but how how good of a win was it? Can we address the elephant in the room? And we didn't even talk about don't this. Call guy. me an elephant, mofo. Yeah, I, thought, I was like, what the hell? Not, not yeah, neither one. Shame. Uh, we didn't talk about this last night. And am I tripping? Did y'all find it something wrong with the, the lack of uh, sense of urgency that Jorge Linares did not have through rounds 11 and 12? Um. <laughs> Yeah, I, I think I mentioned – no, I, I did mention to you that I thought he – I don't think he kept his distance enough with aggression. I think he allowed himself to get too close, and Devin is cl- – I mean, he literally one time took a step. He went in straight the hole. Like, he, yeah. did the sl- he did the seventh grade slow dance move. But um, So I think he maybe – if he was – he didn't turn the tempo up enough, like you're saying, the urgency, yeah. and he didn't keep his distance, so he allowed himself to be held. And so then you – kind of blow your opportunity at that okay, point. I, we got to talk about this. Sean, did, did you see that? That, Lenar, well, you know, Devin ran the clock out pretty good with his clinching. It was, yeah. You know. Clinching, like, nice way of putting it, but go ahead. No, I mean, I thought I thought Lenares could have been a little busier because each time he got off that left hook or that one, two, three, it, it was really landing hard those last couple rounds, and, and he was still hurting Devin with each shot. But – you know, Devin was able to tie him up for, for about half the round and, and regain himself. So, yeah, Linares probably could have pushed on it. But, we're, you know, we're talking about a 35-year-old guy in the championship round. So, um, I thought, put it this way, I didn't think he let the opportunity fully slip by. I thought I thought he still fired off some shots and landed some hard shots in those rounds. And, and Dev held up to him. But I could see could see why you guys would feel like he could have went for broke that much more. But um, he yeah, still landed some good one, two, threes and a good left hook. But Dev, Dev was smart and, and held him up. My thing is, outside of him being 35 years old, there's no excuse, especially with his type of experience, for him not to throw upwards to 60 punches in that 11th round and 70 punches in that 12th round. I don't know if I'm asking too much. I don't know if I'm tripping, but he didn't turn it on. And I found that very, um, not, I, I, that bothered me. Bothered me that he did not turn it on. Maybe now talking about it and you're bringing out his age, maybe it's something that I don't know. Maybe he felt something that I couldn't see with my eyes. Maybe it was something that held him back from the output that I thought he should clearly have had in rounds 11 and 12. When you can gesture this dude to the corner, to me, that lets me know you, you got some energy and you're ready for this 11th round. Nobody nobody runs across the, the ring, uh, across the ring and throws 100 punches. That doesn't happen in boxing. However, when you see somebody hurt, you jump on them, you throw punches, you, 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 you buck them off for you, you keep throwing, you push them, you headlocking them. You, you, don't forget, he's 35. You're throwing them down, you're roughing them up, all this and that. And I didn't get any of that from Jorge Linares. And I found that, I'm going to use the word now, I found that suspicious. I found that to be very weird. Did not understand that. And I did not like that for Devin Haney because Devin, you, there's more adversity that Devin was supposed to have experienced through that 11th and 12th round. And I did not like that for Jorge Linares because when you're supposed to be challenging this dude, this is the best camp you've ever had in your entire life through 35 years or whatever, 37 years, whatever it was that you said, where is that now? And that, that bothered me. So I'm just going to put that on record. I'm going to go on record for saying that I did not like the way Jorge Linares ended the fight. And I don't, I don't like what I don't like it. I don't want to say too much more than that. I'm going to let everybody else say what it is, but I so okay, so I brought that to my dad's attention. My dad didn't see the fight, so I broke it down to him. Beginning to end, I say, you know what, dad? Uh, at the end of the fight, 
Um, Jorge dropped him in the didn't, uh, drop didn't, didn't drop him. Jorge hurt him in the tenth round, but then Jorge didn't go at him in the eleventh or twelfth, and there was a slight pause on the phone. My dad said he didn't go at him. I said no. Uh, he, I mean, he gestured to he knew that that uh, Devin was hurt, and Devin continued to hold throughout the entire eleventh and twelfth round, majority of the twelfth round, and Jorge never put his foot on the gas pedal or had a sense of urgency. And there was another pause. My dad said, "Well." What do you say? If it if it if it if it looks like a if it looks duck, it, 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 quack, if it look, quacks yeah, like a duck, yeah. He yeah. said if it looks like a duck, oh black, black man like lo- logic. <laughs> yeah, he said he said then it's a duck, and I said I don't know what I'm gonna do on this show tonight, but that I did find that to be a, a problem, and he said yeah that's that's a problem to me. So um, I just didn't like it, man. Uh, I, and 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 y'all heard me through 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 the course of the eleventh and twelfth round. I did not want to see. Having a uh, Devin lose that fight, uh, well, I one, freaked I out did. too. Much as much I as I, I was on him, I, I said, "Sean, I do not want to see his kid lose like this." I don't want to see him go down. I don't. No. Him, I don't. I because not it's, only do I like the dude and have a relationship, with a friendship with the dude, he's a good fighter, and so there's great fights yeah. to be. To yeah, be I didn't want to see him lose. I don't like want that. to see that get messed up. But uh, but on the other side of that. I'm a boxing fan, and I know what I need to see at this point in the fight, and I didn't see that. So uh, that made me mad if y'all can't tell. Hey, yeah. Sean, you was there. What was the booing about? Uh, the clinching, I think. I think oh, the they, last two rounds? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because he gave overall, a hell of a performance before that. Yeah, no, overall, and they were they were still happy. Like, everyone okay. went home happy in the audience. They liked the fight. It was just that the clinching in the last two rounds – you know, no. Every crowd's gonna boo that. He did what he had to do to survive, man. Yeah, I, I get that. Now, that's yeah, another thing I really like about boxing is you do have a home, a home fighter or a home team or whatever. But once the fight starts going, they rooting for you. But then when they see some stuff not happening the way they needed to happen, they're like, "Oh, he's in trouble." Go get him. You know what I mean? Yeah. It, it ain't like they switching sides, yeah. but it's like they're rooting for whatever they see is good. You know? They're rooting for the sport of boxing. Yeah, yeah. I really like that about boxing. Well, it, and it goes to what you mentioned where you're not rooting for, but you want Devin to succeed. You don't yeah. want to see him get hurt, losing yeah. the 11th or 12th. Hey, I can't say but the same uh, over Carson. Carson might be like, fuck it. Well, no, but as a boxing fan, I'm saying Sean was saying he's kind of rooting for Devin, but yeah. you were still as a boxing purist. Yeah, we're still frustrated at Lenares. Yeah, ah, so so that kind of explains that where you're yeah. like, I want this guy, but still, I know what I'm supposed to see, and I'm not. Seeing yeah, it. yeah, yeah. You um, want to see your guy win, but not because the other guy let him off the hook. Yeah, you you want to see the other guy put him through everything he possibly can and come out on top of that. Yeah, not yeah. not because something the other fighter didn't do. Yeah, yeah. Because yeah. even even at the end of it, Devin still has he's got the story to tell. You know, Ryan was put down in his last fight. And then he comes back and, and knocks out um, Luke Campbell. Luke Campbell. Yeah. And then so that was like, <laughs> that was like, uh, I don't know why he said I wasn't. Hurt. I didn't understand that. Yeah, and no, also, he, I don't he understand why you referenced Garcia getting dropped. He was like, well, they praised the other guy. I was like, no, he didn't. I, I, I surely didn't. We talked about it on the show. I wasn't like, man, great job by Ryan Garcia getting put down. Like, well, I, we, we, yeah, well, that's the weird part is we, we, we praised the fact that he got up and then did what he had to do. Yeah. And uh, it's just not going to happen. It was, happen, and it was also the zone we mentioned on the podcast after Ryan's fight, that the zone kept talking about how courageous it was that he got up and, and yeah, minimized yeah. Luke Campbell dropping him. Yeah. So maybe that was what kind of Devin was feeling that yeah. well, this broadcast, you, but uh, he can't hear the broadcast because last night, I mean, God knows the whole broadcast. Devin Haney was the greatest fighter of all time, and ah, he, he was this and he was that. Um, hey, how do you guys feel about this? You know, look over Sean Zartel's left shoulder. Uh, sh- the record? Floyd, Floyd had – they. That too. <laughs> uh, uh, it was a struggle in the first fight, and then he, he ran it back and dominated him. What do y'all feel about him just running back and dominating Lenaris? How do y'all feel? Does that- I don't think he can. Oh. I don't think it's necessary. I don't yeah. think it's necessary, but I don't think he. I don't think, other than the slip up yesterday, like he dominated him yesterday for the most yeah, part. But, but everybody only remembers the last. Yeah, yeah. I, I think that's just kind of a fickle fan. You're seeing so, what you want to see. Something I, I, that's going to be on, in your career that happened. Yeah, it, it happened. I mean, yeah, but but I I don't think like I didn't come away from that performance thinking, man, Devin really, he really needed to do something different. He was really good for 
most of the fight, has some struggles. And I'll I tell you what, if you got a kid coming up that's boxing, he's a definition of how to use the jab. Mm-hmm. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. I was like, yeah. He, fire, he, fire, he fires that mofo off. And man. they hard as hell. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, he, he fires that jab out there. But yeah, yeah, he did, he did, it was good performance. I, 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 I don't want to do the grading system, but I thought it was good. Really good. Not great. I don't, I uh, maybe great. <laughs> kind of okay. right below great, we'll say. It's, but, it's time for a top five opponent. It's time yeah. to get this rolling. It's time. And the other, the other side of that too, because I talked about BH a little bit. The other side of that is it sounds like that they're bringing in other guys. And yeah. Davidson. Yeah. The story on the show was that you know BH practically fired himself and said, "Hey, you bring me back. You hire me if if I'm the guy you want." And uh, kudos to to De- to Devin basically saying, "Hey man, we we started this together. We are gonna end this together to this point at least." Is but he like? Is this. he like AH? Are we not allowed to say? Go no, 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 Bill. Yeah, yeah. Hey, <laughs> <right>. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, fair enough. Yeah. So I was like, usually we say AH, and then I was like, wait a second, are we is is he like Voldemort? We're not allowed to. He he shall he should not be named. But uh, um, no, I like the idea of it though. Like you said, where yeah. you you kind of take yourself out of it and say, hey. Yeah. This is your career. If you want me, I'm here. If not, we're still father and son. Hey, and we're gonna hey, rock. hey, Kenny Porter would never. No. Kenny Porter. <laughs> yeah. I don't know no. what Kenny Porter would do. No, he, he wouldn't do that. Let's be honest. But, but that's fine. That's not Kenny hey, Porter. Hey, son. Oh, uh, Peter, my daddy would do that too. Like, oh, yeah. You fire me. I'm your daddy. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, no, I, 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 I don't think I, I don't think you deserve. I don't think your dad ever needed to. Yeah, yeah. Not the not the Bill Haney. Nah, yeah, I was, to, I was, I was but, investing with you. Yeah, but no, I don't think your dad would have. I either. think. Yeah, but let me, let me just to touch on Bill just for a second. I think that Bill is kind of doing a lot of the things my dad did, where he's he's allowed a lot of people to work with Devin. And I think that he's learned from the people. That's what my dad did. You know, yeah. uh, a lot of people may think that my dad is a, is a control freak and has controlled my career, so on and so forth. Hey, Sean, but your, your dad seemed like he got a little more background on boxing than Bill, if I'm not. That, yeah, I mean, that's another thing too. So my, and my dad's on another level. My dad tells a story that he's been in, he's been in boxing. God, Lord, <laughs> what did he say? He so says, I was 30, boxing at two years old. He 1950. Said, he, he says, he says, this is 30 years. He says, so his thing now is this is 30 years in boxing. And that's not including when I box as a, as a, as a teenager or as a preteen. So, but my dad does. He really, I, and I, I, I'm going to love having my dad on because y- y'all probably, I don't know if y'all going to be on when I have my dad on. <laughs> no, I'm good. I'm good. Hey, Carson, you, you got it? I'm out. No, I'm it's gonna be, oh, none of that smoke. Oh, I love him. It's going to be something much more. It's going to be a little bit more intimate. And we're going to kind of get into the storytelling a little bit. But the long story short, my dad practically has been a coach his entire life. And you're looking at me and saying his entire life. My dad told me that he used to play football. When, and when he was 14, he would go from his football practice to a younger group of a, a younger team. And he would coach that team. And then when he was when he wasn't at his games, he would coach that team at his games and so on and so forth. So when my dad came back into boxing when I was four years old and he took me to the gym and started training me. My dad was boxing himself. And just like when he played football, when he was 14, he was also coaching guys. And so when my dad says, I've been in this thing for 30 years now, he he's basically saying, yo, I box and coach guys at the same time. And he did that for a number of years before he realized that I can't continue to box, you know, amateur and, and coach other guys too. So and l- let me say this about, about Bill Haney as well as KP. I think not knowing what you don't know is important and mm-hmm. being um, smart enough and having enough common sense and humility to allow mm-hmm. other people to be involved. So like there are definitely boxing coaches in the game mm-hmm. that if somebody else tried to get involved, they're like, no, you can't. Mm-hmm. Your dad, I mean, Barry Hunter helps you in camps. Mm-hmm. Um, there's been people around. Obviously, you spar. Freddie Roach, I'm sure, was throwing some stuff. And your dad wasn't saying, hey, don't tell him anything. He's mm-hmm. saying, absorb it. Same thing with Bill Haney. Yeah. He's, he's a young trainer in the game, and he's allowing Ben Davidson, who's literally a young trainer in the game, yeah, very knowledgeable, yeah. to chime in. So I think that for anyone that is critical, you can be critical of either trainer, but I don't think you can criticize them for not allowing their sons to gain knowledge and I'm going to raise my hand because I felt like when we when I first mentioned BH Bill, I felt like I was very critical of him. But I was I, I think that I was critical of him because of that moment in the 10th round. And it really was kind of a it was very surprising to me that they both kind of panicked in the corner. But I also smile at that because 
uh, you know, I'm, I'm a Christian and the Bible says that you smile through adversity because it's a testing of your faith. And not, not that that was a testing of their faith, but it was a test for them. And now they can go back and, and look at it. I, I'm sure Bill's going to listen to what he said or replay what he said and all that kind of stuff. I really think that that was a moment for him that for father and son, for him to grab his son by the gloves and say, Hey son, look at me. You're good. You train for this. You're going to make it through this. This is nothing. Let's just, let's just get through these last two, you know, something along those lines. And yeah. that didn't come, which was unfortunate for the moment. They made it through it. They're going to be better because of it. And uh, I still would love to see them in some big fights. They're, they're, they're ready for the big time. Yeah. I, mean, I mean, Ant said, I mean, even if Bill Haney's not, doesn't have your dad's longevity in the sport, he's yeah. going to have growing pains just like a young fighter. Yeah. That, that's yeah. fine. Like yeah. we, we mentioned it because it was such a big moment. It's on the main yeah. event of a fight. Yeah. So we're kind of yeah. highlighting it, but like yeah. it happens. Young yeah. fighters and, mess up. Young trainers have hiccups. You had hiccups last week. Um, but <laughs> and you and you had da- you had Davidson in the corner. Yeah, worked with Roy Jones over the years. They've worked with uh, Floyd Senior over the years and Floyd Junior over the years. They've been around the, the the cities of Vegas and Cali. They've they've done a lot, and they're going to grow together, man. I'm I'm glad to see them yeah. be successful last night, even and, that, that adverse. And, and the father son thing, it's almost thing where you know how far you can go with your kid. So yeah. in that moment, BH, you know what you could say to your son, uh, what you can't say. Like I used to tell my dad, I'm like, man, why are you always soft with everybody else? You kill me. He's like, because <laughs> that shit, that soft shit don't work with you. Yeah, you're, no, you you're can take different. it. Yeah, so and like with KP, he knows how far he can push Sean. So yeah. I, Sean may not be the boxer he is today without his dad. Yeah, so, and yeah. it could be the same thing with uh, uh, he's not. Uh, I, I would say that. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And I, I mean, I maybe we can end on this, but I see my dad working with other guys now, and it's like my dad. I would say recently there's been a a, a, a change, but my dad would keep his foot on my neck because he knew my my his foot had to be on my neck. On the other side. I'm like, yo, get off my back. But I didn't yeah, realize yeah. it took me a long time for me to understand that he had to do that. And I didn't know that that needed to be done for me. It got me where I'm at now. But I see him now. My dad, he'll put his foot on somebody's neck. Because he know. <laughs> he, know yeah. he, know, he, know a couple, he know this ain't my son. He know this ain't my son. I don't know what this dude going to do. You know, <laughs> this dude's tougher than I thought he was. And all this and that. You know, so it's it's funny seeing my dad work with guys now, man. Yeah, I love really. it. Yeah, so... Um, what we got this weekend, man? What's next? What's Sean's I tell the what, hey, hey, little fight called what, Floyd Mayweather versus Logan Paul? Might have mega fight. That's what that's what I think they're calling it. Okay, okay. Son, are you gonna be in attendance? No, 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 no. B- BT's got that one. Ben's got that one. Oh, I will be in Miami for Tiafimo versus Cambosis. Ooh. Uh, June twelfth, I'll be there for Shakur. This dude, stay in Miami. He think he's slick. He thinks he's treat daddy right, or something. He's trying to get a tan. Week. No, no, leave him alone. No, he's trying to get a tan <laughs> on the low. <laughs> let, let, let me end on. I know you wanted to end on something, SP. No, Aunt, no, no, me- Aunt mentioned the schedule. Let me just say. So last night we have two fights that are conflicting. It was annoying. Yeah. We didn't get to watch the one live. Whatever. Yeah. June nineteenth. I'm disgusted. What happened? <laughs> ESPN. <laughs> In a way, fights on. Um, hey, that's your guy. Yo, hundred percent. You know, you know that's my guy. Oh, so you Great. watching that one? There's Great. fights on like every platform that night. Showtime has Charlo. Um, um, the the zone, zone has Bungia. Yeah, and Tiafimo's on Triller. Triller. And yo, then we f- even have a Julio Caesar Chavez exhibition. So you have, have, you okay. have four that's major double. fights on the exact same night. This, that's uh, silly. That's, That's just silly. It's embarrassing. I'm disgusted. <laughs> That's a lot. That's a lot, man. I know which one Sean's watching. Which one am I watching? Charlo. Why am Montiel? I? Why am I watching Charlo? Who's the Showtime, baby. Showtime. Ooh, Sean Porter yeah. watches Showtime. Yeah. Hey, I'm, I might be somewhere else. We, Ooh, we'll see. Oh, okay. okay. Intrigue. Intrigue. We'll Drop see. in the comments. Close on this. SP. <laughs> People wanted to know. Touch on this quickly. Uh, you got the spar. Xander Zayas. Down yeah. There. Talk about it a little bit. Young dude, a lot of energy, uh, great dude outside of the ring, um, inside of the ring, great boxing ability. Uh, he's fast. He's got some moves, which is pretty cool. 
Um, I like to see when guys have moves and I take that move from you and then see what you get, what, what you're going to do, you know? So he's got a few moves, which is pretty cool. Um, and, 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 uh, and he's competitive. Um, I can't really speak on the power. I mean, we yeah. we're in big gloves, so on and so forth. Um, but overall, uh, what I walked away from in the ring was the fact that I know of him, but, but I know a lot and I know a lot of the audience or some of the audience may not know him. Get to know Xander because he is up and coming. Get to know him. He is up and coming. He was highly regarded coming into it. And so I think people people were curious on if you were given the cosign, but it sounds like you are for sure. I will give the cosign. Yeah. I will give the cosign and and uh, very mature too, which uh, it'll take you some ways. You guys know that. Yeah, for sure. I actually yeah. got to cover his uh, debut in Reno. He fought his debut was on the undercard of Shakur Stevenson's first uh, title fight. And he's just a great kid, man. I, I'm just hoping, and I wonder if you guys think too, or like if he can be that Trinidad Cotto that Puerto Rico's been needing since Cotto retired. So he's fun to watch. Yeah, absolutely. And getting some work with Showtime Sean P. Puerto <laughs> Rico. Yeah. Um, yeah. No, he's up and coming. I really liked him, and I'm looking forward to seeing more of him. I, I got a feeling we'll we'll do some things in the future together too. Yeah, very good kid. Port of yeah. Zayas coming in July. Hey, <laughs> this is the port away. Uh, I got to do something new for this outro, man. This, this that that outro when I'm in the white suit, when the cream suit. With oh, the- I like that. Hi. Hey, 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 another thing is, hey man, you trying to change up the logo? Y'all tell the suit the logo. So you, you look like you look like cru- you look like you look like Creflo Dollar. Hey, the logo. I ain't changing the logo. Okay, right. I look like Creflo Dollar, don't I? Yeah, hundred percent. I like it, man. Yeah, I don't hey, mind it. Hey, it looks hey, like he's hey, asking for money, but hey, fans, I got a big announcement. We getting Sean Porter in twenty twenty one. I don't know when. <laughs> Allegedly. <laughs> oh, oh yeah, you know. Yeah. Hey, listen. With that being said, this is the note we'll end on. The uh, podcast room has almost, i will say, it's 90% done. Okay. We finished and building it out, and we'll be back in studio really soon. You guys stay tuned. Continue to like, continue to support, continue to follow, continue to tell a friend, a brother, a sister, a mother. God bless y'all. Oh, whatever you want in the comments, baby. Don't tell me you didn't enjoy what you saw, because I know you did. What you need to do now, hit that subscribe button, hit the like. Hit that notification button. Check us out every week, every Tuesday. Something new for you right here on the Portaway Podcast.